Test one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, we're going to get started to go for an hour. Oh, let me turn off the southern mic. I was testing it. Hold on. <coughs> cool. It only took me an hour to get this thing down. Right on. All right. This is what we're going to do. I wanted to make sure that uh, we were able to present to the people um, the idea behind uh, anarchy. I mean, you know, and it's not, uh, it's controlled, it's spontaneous order, you know, and, and I've witnessed this so many times over my activist years that um, I, I'm really, really tuned in to how effective people are when you leave them alone as individuals without requiring them to consolidate under some collective. This has been a, 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 you have to imagine from my standpoint, as I came into the freedom movement, it was 1988, I'm in my late 20s, I think it was like 28 or something like that, just had my fourth child, and I, you know, got hit in the face with what was really going on. I was approached, um, I wasn't approached. You know, I don't know. Well, we've got an hour. I'm going to go ahead and give you the, the whole story and build up to what our new project is. But I'm going to try and do it in like three minutes, okay? Those of you that don't know me, if you've listened to my radio show or have known me over the years of that as activists in the core that started here that has made the, the Levolution or Freedom's Phoenix or, you know, whatever we call ourselves that week here in Arizona, it has been... Uh, an evolution of each of our interest and our awareness as they start to overlap in our efforts to, I don't know, to, to, to be free. I mean, it's really no more simple than that. But what has happened is this. In 1988, I came across enormous corruption in the Departments of Commerce on a federal, state level. You know, they had done a law. It was called the you know, you guys are going to need a pen and paper. <laughs> I'm going to show you because I, you know, I, I got a bunch of things I'll go over and show you and kind of direct you to different places. But uh, on my radio show and uh, YouTube broadcasting for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock, we use a video switcher that we can go to the screen and I can show you different things and so on. But uh, I wasn't able to do that with this broadcast. So we're going to go ahead and have make sure that you guys just jot some things down. Now, there is a law. It was called the is called the Omnibus Trade Competitiveness Act of eighty eight. The Omnibus Trade Competitiveness Act of eighty eight. If you look at that and you read it, and it's about an inch thick law Congress passed back then at the end of the Reagan administration going into Daddy Bush. And what it was was the New World Order, man. I mean it was fascism writ large. As a student, you know, going through the public school system and the propaganda mill there, at least they had uh, a definition of what fascism was. You know, it's the mixing between business and government to the point you can't tell the difference between the two. And I go, yep, you know what? This law be it. So before I ever heard the word libertarian or heard the word uh, uh, New World Order or any of that stuff, I could just see the mechanism by which they were going to rule the planet. And it was definitely this. And it consolidated all kinds of stuff in the hands of a few people that control all commerce everywhere. And what happened during that time, right after that, you started hearing a lot. That's another thing. I'm 50 years old. I was born in 61, graduated high school in 79, did some college for a couple of years in there, you know, in the early 80s during the, you know, the, the recession, depression, whatever was going on in the first couple of years of the Reagan administration and into the Carter administration when we had the Cold War is at its peak. You know, the Olympics in Moscow is being boycotted. We had the invasion of Afghanistan. Iran was in the news and revolt. On and on and on. It's like you, you, you read the headlines now, it's the same thing, and often the same people. 
So I've been through this cycle enough to know that there is like a playbook somewhere, and they just want to get more and more power for them to be able to do whatever it is that they want to do. Okay? I, I, I get it. Okay? It's uh, not that difficult. But when you become exposed to the mechanism by which they're doing it, then you're going, whoa, okay, there is a plan. And the plan is everything that's ours, you know, it's real simple. You know, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is, okay? And they looked at where is all the money in retirement accounts, pension funds, all the, you know, where is the money? And the question is always how do we get those in power that have the ability to do it, how do we get all the people's money to be our money, okay? Well, that's what they are doing. It's all situated in every single aspect of our lives. We're just livestock. You know, we're, we're just here to be sheared, man. You know, so as I went through this process and started learning, and I don't need to get into all the details, but that one law made it very clear to me what they were setting up. In fact, right after that, when I was reading that in 88, they're going on about the uh, National Security Administration, NSA, and all this that didn't exist and all that. And I'm going, heck, I just read it. It was right there in the law. You know, as a young guy, I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I knew it was there. I read it. You know, they uh, consolidated a bunch of trade data. And you always heard on the talk shows at the time or uh, in uh, the news and so on, the talking heads, and they go, you know, our trade deficit this and our import export blah, 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 blah. Whenever they give you a number, on anything. This is what I learned a long time ago, over 20 years ago. Right? Every government is, you know, spewing out some number for the media to regurgitate. They got a program in mind to change that number. We have uh, unemployment. We have interest rates. We have, you know, uh, people that, you know, with mustaches that don't have the right kind of shoes. I mean, whatever it is, they got a program that they're trying to build you up to to be able to make use of and give more power to government for them to change a number that they're telling you is so important. Well, what's important is freedom. You know, we'll, we'll determine our own numbers. We'll decide what is and is not important, how much we want to make that number go up or down. But no, 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 no. Never do you ever get them to advocate for what their charter is, which was the defense of individual rights. You know, to just provide equal treatment under the law and, uh, oh, by the way, we'll go by that law thing chained down by the Constitution, all that basic stuff of government, what the promise was, no, that's, that's not on their radar screen. They have to give you a number and say how important it is to raise or lower that number, and they got a program for it. I learned this early on. Now, the thing was, I'm like, how do they get away with all the stuff that they're doing? How was it that they were able to accomplish all the things? Well, I came across them going... It's election law. They eliminated opposition before it begins. They control who gets up on that stage. Now, every now and then, you, you sneak someone in with a gazillion dollars, like the Perot thing in 92, which was, uh, you know, you know he, he was his own little version of fascism. But the point was, you got a gazillion dollars, you insert yourself through the system or at least expose how corrupt it is. And, and I'm sure anybody that was around back then, you recognize a lot of the tactics that were going, tactics that were being done in the media and stuff. Then uh, you recognize later on in the last couple of election cycles. So we learned a lot over the years of how the game is played. When you have someone like Dr. Paul come in, and now we have, you know, he's got company. You know, a Gary Johnson would have been, oh my goodness, a maverick. Now he's like. You know, he's like uh, the moderate, <laughs> you know, compared to what Dr. Paul has been able to accomplish in the minds of the people. They're so concerned about having any opposition to the status quo, they'll do any and everything they can to make sure that that voice is suppressed or made fun of or it's not as important. They're trying to supplant their opinion, the credibility, whatever there is of it, of the mainstream media, the media that's so last century, for yours. They're saying, look, it's what we say is important. Not what you think. What do you know? 
Well, heck, oftentimes now with the Internet and the people being able to research in the last four years, the generation next, the younger people, have already forgotten more about Austrian economics and the truth than these guys have ever read or ever even heard of. I mean, it's, you know, I never knew what that meant. He's forgotten more than you'll ever know. Forgot? What do you mean forgot? There's just so much data that they put in, you know, that just the stuff that they set aside is not as important as some of the key uh, bits of information in their head. There's so much of that that they could benefit from just these young kids at 23 have already forgotten or, or you know, prioritized other information that's up there. So that's got, you know, now I start to understand what they mean. Because the young people have immersed themselves in the truth. This is math. I mean, it's so easy to see what's coming. So, in the 2008 election cycle, have been um, experienced activists through, you know, throughout the years and so on. Excuse me. We knew that the one main thing that we could do was just educate the people, get them freed up here. Now, I know a lot of people, they don't, they don't put a lot into this. Education's great, but then you got a real politic. you got to get in the streets and do and that. Yeah, 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 it's all very interesting. That's a side effect. That's a side effect. That is a side effect of actually knowing what the hell's going on. If you're in the street and you're out there, you know, making a big ruckus and you don't know what the heck's going on, what are you making a big ruckus for? To accomplish what? Yeah, we're cl climbing up the ladder. We're climbing up the ladder of credibility, attention, and, you know, look at me, look at me, look at me. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how high you get up that ladder if it's against the wrong wall. Which wall do you put it up? Which, which hurdle are you trying to get over? So we have been very effective because of experience. You know, we were the young guys. You know, a lot of the activists here in Arizona, we started early because. You know, it was a long story why we just were you guys and – you know, knew that there was something wrong, and how can we make use of the media in order to get uh, the people educated? Because, remember, the most sophisticated we, thing we had back then was pagers and fax machines. So in the early 90s, it wasn't until, you know, mid or even late 90s where you started having, you know, you had email, but nobody was on it. You know, who, who had an email address before, you know, 98? You know, I, a lot of young people, people maybe, they didn't use it the way they do now. We were doing web pages in the mid-90s, but it doesn't make any difference if nobody goes to them. How do you get them to go to them? It wasn't even until the mid-90s uh, before they had Yahoo, any kind of a search engine. You could have the greatest, most wonderful page on the Internet, and nobody knew it was there unless you got a piece of paper in their face. We were all about getting pieces of paper in people's faces, people to have something to make, take an action on, and it's a lot the same now. Now that you have, and that's what we're going to get into this project, what you have now is a, a deluge of information. I mean, you got to be very specific about your query. I want to know about freedom in the city that I'm in and people that I uh, think like. And I, you know, I mean, you know, it's a, a Google search for 15 words, which is cool. I mean, you know, I love that. It's all about knowing what question to ask. So what I'm talking about now is that uh, how do we get people to be able to um, go to this information, make use of it, and be able to spontaneously organize themselves without central planning or controls? That was what was so successful behind the Lovolution. That Lovolution logo... Right here, the Lovolution logo up top, that was part of a campaign that we did in 06. It was over a year before Dr. Paul, and we popularized it uh, with his campaign. And we understood how popular the concept was of just people wanting to be left alone with love, all right? It's just we want to be have, uh, have a total revolution between the ears, but it be not violent, Hey, we're not in support of whatever's going on now, but I'll tell you this, you know, uh, we're not going to use violence. That was key, and I knew that, and it was very popular, that artwork. So we did this, but this is my concern, what's happened. As people start to spontaneously order, as they start to associate, you know, themselves with a freedom message and they want to just be left alone 
I'm a leave me aloneist, okay? Voluntarist, agorist, anarchist, whateverist you want to do. I'm a leave me aloneist, so whatever you want to call that. I want to be able to trade whatever I want and not have to give a cut to somebody. You know, you know government's just a gang with a flag. So I, you know, I figured this out a long time ago. And they'll use that flag to beat you over the head and get their cut of everything. So when you, you talk to people of faith, and they go about, you know, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, and God that which is God's. And I just have to ask a question. Is there anything not Caesar's? At what point do you have a, you know what, uh, you can't pass a law and make fill in the blank Caesar's. I, what is that? Can I, can I keep my time, my life? You know, can I, can I keep my liberty? Can I keep my property? At what point does it become, you know, Caesar just by a piece of paper? So this concept is infectious, and it's growing. Libertarianism is the injection of the libertarian infection into the bone marrow of American politics. Oh, and there's no cure. We have done this worldwide. You know, I go, there's, uh, I'm going to point out a couple of things so that, you know, when you're watching this, you can pause it or watch it later, or you can go. So you can see just how effective this is. We have done a lot of things worldwide, and this is not well known to the Levolution because you don't live in Saudi Arabia. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you a couple of things real quick, and then we'll get to why we're bringing it back home. We need to bring it back locally, uh, back home. And let me tell you how here in a second. At the top of Freedom's Phoenix, when you go to Freedom's Phoenix, this navigation bar up here, whoop, let me get over here, this navigation bar, you'll see all the way to the right, that it says Special Editions and Translate Page. You go to the Special Editions here, and it'll drop down, and you'll see where it goes to Haria Phoenix, is one of the lower bottom ones. It's a whole special edition of Freedom's Phoenix. Now, it has only the stories about the Middle East and Israel and Iran and all that kind of stuff. Now, the translate page next to it, you get on that page, and we hit translate in the 39 languages. Now, we translate it to Arabic, and we post all those stories every day to our Arabic Facebook and Arabic Twitter. When we first started doing this in, like, February, I think it was, it was we got, like, 2,300 Twitter followers almost immediately, and they suspended the account. We're like, oh, yeah, baby, we're having an effect. Well, we just opened up another one. But the point was is that we're going, wow. So we had the We Know the Truth, this, ver this card, and as We Know the Truth, we translated that into Arabic. The Cato Institute had some translations of the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. And it had English on one side and Arabic on the other side. So we got these green books by the hundreds. And we sent them and thousands of the philosophy of liberty, the philosophy of liberty stick animation that you guys may be familiar with. Just Google the philosophy of liberty and it'll blow up all over your browser. Now, the philosophy of liberty is translated in the, you know, dozens of languages, but it wasn't in Arabic. So we worked with uh, Ken Schoolin from ISIL, International Society for Individual Liberty, and they have a site called Jonathan Gullible where a lot of these are produced and uh, uh, the servers are at. And we had one of them, a guy in Moscow did it. It's a long story, but within 10 days, we had that translated into Arabic because it's reverse, you know, writing from right to left and the font, and you know, it was a pain in the butt, and they hadn't already done it. So a few hundred bucks to a guy in Moscow, and he's living large. So he's like, you know, got it done. We had it checked out through a lot of people that spoke Arabic, and we're going, okay, we're done. Ready for prime time. It goes up. We have a special edition. We promote that on the Facebook and Twitter. We went ahead and sent to Alexandria, Egypt, thousands of pieces of material of the cards. We know the truth, and I had people on my show listening uh, from all over the world and from Saudi Arabia in there. Legislators, people in the government from Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Bahrain, Egypt, Afghanistan, Iran, a regular basis for a couple of weeks there, you know, especially a couple of weeks for even a couple of months, but I just concentrated these people from them. I'm like, if I say, I have a sign, and it says, we know the truth, do the people in the street know what that means, whatever the truth is? And they go, yes, they will. And I go, okay, what is that? That these guys are bad guys, <laughs> whatever the government is, whatever the U.S. government, and they say, uh, we recognize this new regime now, they're the guys. You know, they know that's crap. Yes, they do. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So we sent the Philosophy of Liberty by the thousands of pieces of material in DVD in a PAL format, because their DVD readers are a little bit different there, and we knew to do that. So we had the DVDs there. We had the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights. But on the Declaration of Independence, I mean uh, the Constitution page, on the English version, we put a little sticky label on there that says, we already tried this, maybe you can do better. <coughs> because I'm not about endorsing this central plan of the Constitution thing, but Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights, I'm cool with that. So we went ahead and sent that over there. There's a lot of reasons why. Some of the most effective propaganda, you know, into the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc and all that, which is why the Soviet Union and KGB Putin loves having, you know, Russia today in America because they know how effective it is just telling the people the truth about how their regime is, you know, whatever. So I'm going, oh, yeah, the U.S. don't like that none too much. So what we did is we said we're going to do the same thing. We're going to penetrate into the minds of these young people in Arabia. Now, let me give you some stats. In Arabia, we did uh, this, it found out it was the same throughout Arabia. We did it on Egypt and Cairo first. Egypt has 80 million people. 40% of them live on less than $4 a day. Food prices went up 120%. The reason they were in revolt was because they were starving, and we knew this. So we go, all right, uh, what's the age bracket? So I just, you know, curious. 33% of the population is 14 years of age and younger. The average age in Egypt is 24. It's 37 in America. I'm going, they're not going to get away from this demographic. So what happens when you go to a, an ancient culture that has had somebody ruling over them, a pharaoh, you know, number 300 and whatever, you know, over the millennia, just boom, 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 you don't own yourself. What happens when you do the philosophy of liberty? The Levolution uh, flower-throwing guy. And the reason I thought of it is because they were throwing Molotov cocktails on the crowds. You know, the bad guys were in uh, their city square there. So I'm going, all right, we're going we're gonna, to don't retaliate. You know, do it with peace and love and be creative and all that kind of stuff because they hate it when you do that. So it's not because I, I love these bad guys as much as, you know, I let on. It's just that I know that love is the most effective weapon against them. And if you want to hurt them, you want to really get them, you do it with love, you know. Plus, it makes you a lot better inside. You know, you know, allowing hate to come into you and go around torturing people and all this other stuff it has just as much effect on you as it does the bad guys. So I'm just like, you know, you know, you don't want to go down that path. Keeps your mind right. So what we did is we go, all right. We translated all this into Arabic, we sent it to them, and injected into Generation Next throughout Arabia the fact that they own themselves. That, 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 that is the most effective thing that you can do. Everything blossoms from that. If you come to the realization that you're not seeking permission to be free, you are. It's up here. Somebody might be occupying your space. Somebody might be, uh, you know, oppressing you. Somebody might be practicing their tyranny. But you're not, you know, uh, enslaved until you enslave yourself. It doesn't matter what's going on, you know, heck, out, outside of your your home. or But they're trying to get in. They're trying to get into your skin, too. So there's all this vaccine injection thing. I go, can I claim the property inside my skin? Can I do that? You know, it's a good issue. I like when they do this stuff because that makes such a good point. So the thing is, is that if we can change the culture, the revolution between the ears, in the minds of an entire generation and an entirely new language, different part of the world, what kind of impact would we have? Within weeks and a couple of months later, Ken Schoolin from ISIL, International Society for Individual Liberties, an economist at a university in Hawaii, he sends me an email. And we put up on Freedom's Phoenix, and he says, Ernie, what the heck, man? He goes, the second most download country of the philosophy of liberty, of all of them throughout the world in all languages, we have the United States, English is the most popular, the second most popular country, Saudi freaking Arabia, okay? The Arabic-speaking world is starting to get exposed to the concept of I rule myself. Now, that is the danger to the bad guys. So... Honduras started going through the same kind of problems for the same reasons because of the same people and entities and blah, blah, blah. So we started focusing on Honduras a little bit. But this all started like January this year when Cairo was going into revolt. 
I was being asked a lot of questions about what I was going to do for the Ron Paul revolution in 2012. <laughs> you don't need me. You know, besides, they didn't want the anarchists involved in this thing anyway. They needed to have, you know, kind of this, you know, pure, upstanding, tie-wearing, we're not, you know, being off on our own central plan through whatever. So you got the campaign taking care of that. You got campaign for liberty outside of Canada. You got the, you know, the super PACs and all this other stuff. The love illusion inside the campaign. But this is my concern and why I want to bring it back home. If you consolidate, if you collectivize, if you try and put all your eggs in one basket, all you got to do is, you know, have the big Republican elephant stomp on that one basket, you're done. So I'm going, no, 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 no. I can see where this is going. This is one of the vulnerabilities of having only one effort. As much as I, and I, hopefully I've demonstrated over the years, my support of having Dr. Paul up on that stadium, I mean up on that podium, I'm going, you get him on that stage, and he says, um, you know, Freedom good and government sucks. You know, I'm, amen, brother. How, what do I got to do to make sure you stay up there? That was the power of the revolution, is that you deal with him or you deal with us. So they dealt with us, and uh, they didn't like it. So now we have that venue. That's covered. And whatever help we can do to keep that going, but it's a culture thing. We need to change the culture vote totals and you know assuming you even trust accounting computers that's a whole nother thing but you know the representation of our philosophy in society is you know manifests itself in a lot of different ways and politics is just one of them in fact it's not even my favorite in the music movies comic books books magazines culture culture the youth, Generation Next, high school, grade school, elementary, culture, raising your children, homeschooling, culture. That culture is manifest in the other, because what do they do? Government always seeks one thing above all else. If it was easy just to conquer and take over, well, heck, they got enough F-16s, you know, M-16s and Abrams. You know, so I, I, I what, uh, you think they can't just conquer? What the heck do you think they're doing all these countries all over the place? They, like, uh, they put their foot up, some Marine puts his foot up on some rubble, raises the American flag, goes, we win. And then the war starts. Then you have the insurgency. Then you have the people going, you know what, occupation sucks. So I'm just like, you know, if, if conquering militarily and by force was the answer, heck, this would be all over. Be done. No. No, 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 no. They need to have legitimacy, credibility. And that's what activism and humor has a lot to do with this love illusion, is you attack their credibility. You have a culture knowing that they are not your rulers, and they sure as heck are not your betters, I can tell you that. So while we're having such an impact worldwide, in entirely different and creative languages. Because you go on the top of Freedom's Phoenix, you go to Special Edition, goes down to Haria Phoenix, which means Freedom's Phoenix in Arabic, and then you go to Translate Page into Arabic, boom, or any other language, any one of the pages, front page, whatever. You do that, they're getting it. Now it's kind of, I know it's a translator, it's probably caveman talk, you know, but at least they get the idea. And we're doing this in Europe a lot, and guys in Poland and Europe, I, we were talking about this on a show, and they said, Ernie, you don't even do the, need to do the translation. We all learn English. Heck, we, do, we just need to know you were there. Boom, we do the English version. And I start checking as we're promoting the site worldwide. Yeah, it's English all over the place. So what can we do to inspire these people again? Because keep in mind, what started the Arab Spring was Tunisia, by a 28-year-old computer programmer that lost his job, just wanted to sell fruit on his fruit cart out in the square, and they wouldn't let him, wouldn't give him a permit, wouldn't allow him, and he's destitute, trying to su survive and feed his family of eight. So he sits down, pours lighter fluid on himself, and then lit himself on fire, literally sparking a revolution. And I'm telling you, it's going to be down to food. It's going to be down to people being able, because I tell you what, you be hungry, Mm, 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 mm. So, that's why we got 47 million people out of 300 million on food stamps here in this country. Sooner or later, the math is going to catch up to us. We need to be ready for the culture change. So, this is what we did. We're going to bring it back home because there's way too many efforts I saw associated with the Levolution 
they're going, uh, you know, we have a, a Levolution Ron Paul this, and a Levolution marches, and a Levolution money raising, and a Levolution yada, 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 yada. And I'm going, didn't you see what happened? The Republican National Committee just kind of created their own thing, you know, layered by whatever, but it's Republican National Committee, and they have co-opted the Tea Party. They came in and said, yeah, 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 you see all these millions of people in Washington? Yeah, they, they want what we tell you they want. You know, really? Really. Really. This could have been an enormous movement, but they don't want an enormous movement. They want a controlled movement. So whatever deal is being made inside politics, and do, I don't care. I, you're still voting? You know, so I'm just, you know, but you can use politics. You can use the limited time and attention span of people that uh, uh, kind of inject something into their mind. So what we're going to do is, just like we were successful with the revolution, how can we bring all this activism back home so that you're not trying to, everybody's trying to have a national impact. They want to have a national effort. Everybody get a, if, if we can just get $5 in five minutes from everybody to do whatever it is um, I want to do, well, then it will be a success. But they don't understand the reason the revolution was so successful, even in support of Dr. Paul's message, message, fantastic messenger, by the way. Yay, Dr. Paul. But it's the message. It's not the individual you know, how, how long do you think uh, an individual can last? I mean, we're mortal, you know, and, and, and Dr. Paul is spry as he probably kicked my butt. You know, he's still in his mid-70s. How many decades do you think he's going to be around? And who's going to replace him? You know, is even Rand the same kind of guy? You know, I mean, that's up for everybody, individual to decide. But I tell you, you know, uh, guys like Ron Paul come around like once in a freaking lifetime. I've been waiting my whole life, my whole life for someone like this that I could put my head down and plow that I did not have to worry about what he said. I'm going, look, what he said, man, whatever, you know, listen to what he said. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, whatever, what he said. I can focus on the activism without having to make excuses for an individual. This is essential, that you can free up your time in support of what? Well, I'm in support of you doing whatever you want. You know, that, that Freedoms Phoenix is all a tool. Everything that we do is open source. Everything that we do is you get to do whatever, I get to do what I want, you get to do what you want. The Levolution logo, they were all, Ernie, man, you need trademark and copyright and this and that. You can make all blah, blah, blah. I go, no, no, no. It's a peace symbol, man. Anybody gets to use it. Well, then Stalin can use it and Mouse Tongue get it and, uh, you know, and Pol Pot. And, they, you know, they'll be all communist and fascist and whatever it is. And they use it. And I'm going, yeah, so? You know, you think uh, Hitler having, you know, uh, on his forehead a peace symbol all of a sudden changes the peace symbol meaning? I mean, you know, people find it. I don't care, you know. But you want to get some kind of control back, all you, you know, IP guys, intellectual property, oh, you got to have a go, no, 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 no. You know, the solution to, you know, irresponsible speech or them trying to take it over or co-op something is more speech. So we're going to take it back. I do not want, as they did with the Tea Party, for the Republican Party to take this revolution, make it somehow a Republican their thing, and then you know what's going to happen to it. So you guys just keep trying. I can do what I want with it because I can, all right? And this is what we're going to do. I want to demonstrate... Because they're going, how is it that you guys keep, you know, having these kinds of large projects? Because they have the same formula. We're going to inspire the rest of the country by demonstrating what we can do in a local level. Little bitty teeny any area. Now, here in the Valley of the Sun, there are many communities. Some of the larger ones are, you know, Phoenix, of course, Glendale, Mesa, Tempe, Scottsdale. Now, Tempe resides landlocked in amongst all these communities. Around there, like the hub of it. It's where Arizona State University is. It's uh, near the airport, uh, Sky Harbor International Airport. It's near uh, you know, a, a natural barrier here called the Salt River. It's a dry river, wet river. It's got a lake. What, you know, it's just you know, a big, giant scar down the middle of the valley. But it borders and gives you an isolated area of this one, and it's only... I don't know, like five, six miles square, you know, or, um, you know, in each direction. So what is that? You know, uh, 25, 30 square miles. It's not, it's not that big, but as university. 
So as a demonstration to show how you make national, statewide, national, international, global, universal impact is by showing and demonstrating the success of it locally. You got a great local thing you're doing that's kicking butt and you're dominating, you're injecting big giant syringe into the uh, bone marrow of the politics and the mindset of the people in your area. I so want to know about it because I want to do it, okay? So we're taking all of the ideas of the last four years and before. There's a lot of this stuff, you know, you guys don't know, it's been like a decade ago that we've been building on all kinds of stuff, and I'll show you some of it here in a little bit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus all our effort, considerable talents and skills and abilities uh, I'll let you uh, in on, and we're going to focus it on one community, Tempe, Arizona. They know we're coming. You know, we're never secret about this. We're like, here we come, you know. And the more they try to resist, the more they try and do it, the more they're trying to be a pain in the butt, you know what happens. The more press we get, the more fun we have. You know, this is, this is not hard, you know. I can get people to look once, but what are they going to be looking at? How entertained are they going to be? How informed are they going to be? How educated are they going to be? That's your job. You know, that, that's our job. I go, made you look. And you go, ooh, and I'm glad you did. Or, damn it, it's just another ad. It's more propaganda. It's crap. I don't care. Or even if they're of a different philosophy and it pissed them off because you know you just hit a truth nerve, you know, that, that's just as effective too. And oftentimes more effective. Because when you're in a personal interaction with someone, they get defensive and they want to, you know, outquit it and argue and so on. But if you get them passively looking at something, and even if they disagree with it, well, then they have to think and formulate an answer in some way that they can counter it or write back or something. And in that process, they might learn something. So what we're going to do is how can we get people, I'll tell you the evolution of this. we got uh, just enough time to do this. How can we uh, have an effect on individuals going to the information that we want them to get? And be glad they did. And this came at about at Port Fest. Alma Summer is one of the activists here, and she had a phrase, silly statist, taxes are for slaves. And, you know, we're just having fun with that, and we're going, how could we do that? I mean, boy, you get a bumper sticker like that or something, that makes somebody look. They go, ooh. Then you have a lot of, you know, freedom's the answer, what's the question? Still voting, you know, love evolution. There's a lot of different little simple phrases, you know, that you could get somebody to have some interest in looking at least reading the bumper sticker. So we came up with the idea, and it evolved. You know, Ty, uh, an activist that we met there, had some information about how QR codes work and was talking to us about that and different things you can do with them and track them, and you can even manipulate them to make them look like you nail know, letters in there, do all kinds of different things. So this all started to merge together into this idea. So the first one was we said, you know, what if <coughs> we had something like this? Now, you do this small. And you have a uh, sticker somewhere where you're there for three to five minutes, nothing to do with your th thoughts and your smartphone. Would you click on this? Gas pumps. Every week, at least, you're going to the fueling station for your car. And you're sitting there, but nothing to do. Dun, 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 dun. So you're sitting there, and all of a sudden, on the gas pump, it says 20 cent gasoline, or silly status, taxes are for slaves, or uncovering the secrets, exposing the lies. You know, you know it's not two for one hot dogs inside the AM, PM, so you got nothing to do. You pull out your smartphone and you go bleep, bleep, and where does it take you? What is this dime worth uh, dot info? You know, what is this coin worth dot info? So that's one. You know, we have all kinds, we have landing pages that we do. But these cards, you know, well, what's on the back? A QR code. And what do we do with it? It goes to a landing page that promotes a lot of other places. What is this coin worth? Podcast for Cop Block, The Love Police, and CopBlock.org. So this is just an example. We're just sampling this. We just started this. So we're going to be putting up all the templates. PSDs, which is a Photoshop file for the large version a medium version, and an itty-bitty tiny baby version. Now think about this. If you have 
these, now this, imagine this, only three quarters of an inch thick. I mean, uh, dimensions. Three quarters of an inch. That means it's the size of, you know, like this. Where would you put that? How would you get people to, you know, where else are you there for three to five minutes with nothing else to do but, uh, you know, play with your smartphone? Public restrooms. You put these little squares... Lord knows how long they'll stay there at the, on the toilet paper dispenser on the inside of the door. And you put it in the toilet paper dispenser, probably it'll probably stay there forever. So you just go, you know, everywhere. You know, how many sporting events are there? NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, hockey. Get my point? What if you went to high school football games Friday and you went earlier in the day you just go in the stands. Nobody does anything. On the back lip of the – somebody sitting in front of you, the back lip, you got a little QR code, three-quarters of an inch thick. You know, nobody's – I went to a recent game. Heck, half the people in the stands on their phones. Okay, a uh, blip. You, you know, what percentage of 100,000 people, 50,000 people in the stands, you got these every 12 feet around, so you got a bunch of activists went in, did whatever. You know, uh, uh, how many people are going to that? You get my point? We are going to – Best can be ASU Sun Devil Stadium, where all the transportation hubs and the bus lines and the light rails are another government expenditure thing. You have all that, you know, the, the, the bus stops for schools. Parking meters. You start to see it? What happens? We go in the university and we put them everywhere. Now, because it also is a small area, what that means is, is that. Uh, things like Cox Cable, the cable communications where you get television, you can buy contracts that have only uh, distribution and commercials will go on in a certain geographical area and on certain stations and, you know, times and whatever. So you can get down to cheap and just do whatever fill-in-the-blank uh, History Channel, MTV, uh, VH1, whatever the heck you think might. And a lot of times, you just uh, banner ads on web pages that are popular at the university. And you go, for a little bitty baby money, you could just make this thing saturated. I'm covering the secrets, exposing the lies, you know, the bird logo here, and boom, and a, U, uh, and a QR code. You know, and you just do that, and they're just like, and you don't say where it's going. You don't put a website on it. They have to go click on it, okay? I like that because everybody's going to be QR-urious, QR-urious. <laughs> My son-in-law came up there. He goes, I don't know, are you qr You know, I'm going, yeah, baby, I love that. So qr is going to be what's going to drive this whole thing in Tempe and internationally. You watch. I got the same kind of, you know, incredulous looks and doubt and everything. Yeah, 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 this evolution won't go. And I'm like, yeah, watch me. We had four donators. I had one gave me $500. One gave me $500. Another gave me 1000 I put in $500, and the evolution was started with $2,500. And it went boom, and there was never a doubt in my mind. And I told these guys, they're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Whoa, man. Same thing's going to happen here. We've already, just I did a little uh, YouTube on Freedom's Phoenix a few days ago. I've already got $2,500 in contributions to make sure that this thing gets kicked off. I wasn't even asking for money. If you guys want to go to Freedom's Phoenix and find join us on the top navigation, go and contribute, and well, cool, we may do a fundraiser later. But I tell you, you know, we're already, you know, started up enough to get this going. You want it to be even bigger, fine. But I'm telling you. We're already doing this. I don't start anything unless I already know I won before I started. That's why we always have successful events from here, because it's always open source. Everybody gets to participate. Everybody's enthusiastic and participating before we even start. Now, we have silly status. Taxes are for slaves. Now, Alma has this really great uh, artwork behind it. It's like the uh, voluntarist V, but it's upside down into an A, and we're using this a lot. And we're going to be doing this in build-up going to Libertopia. So Libertopia is, we're going to already have results by the time we get in the end of the third week in October in Libertopia. This is, these are being printed up now. So we contacted other people. We're like, hey, man, you know, you guys should be involved in this thing. You know, wallet voting, another place that we got, we can do a whole bunch of using silver and everything. Culture, getting people to do that. Oh, 
Stefan Molyneux from Toronto. Now, where will we put his stuff? We're going to get big 28 by 60 inch sheets of this. And we'll be cutting the strips of a whole bunch of these. And activists just be going around. And we're going to even be paying some of the guys that need money. You know, a lot of people need money here. Take a little bit of money. They make a couple of days worth of wages and so on going out and just putting these on all the parking meters. Putting them in the public restrooms. Putting them, we're going to make sure it gets distributed quickly. It's going to be done within one week. We may go an extra week. we got extra stuff. But I'm telling you, we want to just saturate them and boom. I like that. Boom at one time. And it's just going wham. We will be seeing and be able to track an increase in traffic and driving people to where we want them to go. Where might we want them to go? It depends. What's going on? What SWAT team screwed up and killed what kid? You know, oh, we're all over it. So this is a method by which we can do this. Can I got a whole bunch here. But the thing is, is that we also have another tactic. This goes on trash cans, all right? And it's like, while you were out, we inspected your trash. You know, aztiphotline.info. We start putting QR codes on the back. You know, it's a, you know, nice little, uh, you know, 4409 agent stopped by and checked your trash and went through. And, but then what do we do? There's a phone number that we put on here, right down here. Now, these phone numbers go to the news desk of the newspaper, television, radio. We'll do a whole bunch of plates, and we'll have a whole bunch of different phone numbers. Call here. They flood them with calls. We have the radio stations and so on begging us not to do it anymore. Oh, we'll cover what if you just want them. No. You know, pinky swear. You know, so we just, no, 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 no. Come get us. They know. We get all kinds of coverage on this. We've only done it a few times. We've done it before where we have... Uh, localized in Fountain Hills because they were forcing people to use a private, um, uh, they had private trash collection, said, no, we've got to get municipal so that we can inspect all your garbage and it becomes our garbage now. So Fountain Hills, what happened? The hills will have eyes looking over a trash can. Get it? So we're just be very creative with this and put QR codes. Now what happens when you go out to your trash can after it's been dumped? And you got one of these, we just go by. You don't even have to get out of your car or off your bike. Open the lid, put it on there, and it's hanging there. I go out and get my trash. I put this up. They inspected my trash. Ooh, QR code. Clicking, clicking, dialing numbers, going to the web pages. Get it? We don't think we know. We've been doing this for, heck, decades. So we're taking it home. We're going and going to do it in one area, Tempe, and we're going to saturate them with all of these different ones. You know, Angela Keaton from NIWar.com, she was like, you know, this is a good idea. You know, so she's all I think she told, sent me an email. She already ordered some from um, Rick at um, Liberty Stickers. Now, we talked to him. We have a template. We're going to start putting all this up on the Freemans Phoenix website. And we're going to be covering this on a regular basis. So it won't be a secret. We'll probably put a banner ad up there so you can go and get that, and we'll have that up in, within the next week. But the thing is, is that there will be the templates for you to just make use of a Photoshop file or create your own or do whatever you want, have information of how much it costs, where to go to get them, and you do it. You. you not me. You. You know, everything's already on and what you should do and you know what you should, and I think what you should. No, 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 no. There is no what I should. There's what you should. That's the difference of working with people over here at Freedom's Phoenix. Heck no. We'll make it easier for you. We're not trying to glean the money off of you. We're not trying to get our cut. We're not, you know, you know being a middleman and retailing and selling, whatever. We're demonstrating and showing you how you do it, so you do it. I, I already tell. You know, people will be watching this going, you know what you should do? I'm going to send an email learning what they should do. Now, you want to tell me what you, uh, show me what I should do? You do it and show me how successful it is. That's what you should do. So. We're going to go ahead and provide as many supplies and information and templates, examples, YouTubes, inspiration, promotion of this concept so that you will get inspired. Will there be a lot of people that will use this method and support a Dr. Paul's campaign? Probably. I hope so. It's a really cool idea. But, you know, that is not the focus of this. I don't care what you guys do with this. 
Just like the Levolution, man. I, hey, man, there's Logan. I, when I went around the country, you never, all you people have heard me speak. You know, you never going to, you know, get out there and vote. No, 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 no. You vote every time you put a sign up. How many times have I come across, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of times of people that, you know, they're a victim of the drug war. They're felons. They can't vote. You know, a lot of people that, you know, just against it. A lot of people know it's corrupt. A lot of people, whatever. But they're in the streets supporting Dr. Paul because what he said. I want him to get up there and say it because I don't have the voice. He does. I make sure he has that voice. That's starting to slip away. They're starting to bring it too much into the campaign, too much into control and central planning and all that kind of stuff. Fine. They're doing that one less thing we got to worry about. They want to do all the professional inside and make sure they got all the delegates and working with and trusting of and doing and playing the game. Cool. One less thing we got to do. But if we don't make sure that the change in the culture is ingrained and becomes part of the, the freedom mentality, that isn't advocating for freedom. It's knowing and living freedom. It's in the actions and the way. It's like you, you don't set aside your principles for the duration. You know, be like them in order to get so you don't have to be like them. You just don't be like them. You don't operate like them. You don't have committees and meetings and blue ribbon panels and whatever. You just do it. And sometimes people go with you. So we're going to make it easy for people to promote their own little thing. You know, your town of 30, 300, 3,000, 30,000, 300,000, 3 million. You take this mentality. Think about it. you got your own little web page. Heck, if you need a special edition and some place to put it, Freedoms Phoenix can do that. It's like Facebook for activists anyway. Watch the tutorials. You go to the top of Freedoms Phoenix. At the top of the page, you'll see right up here. Right there, it says tutorials. You do that, click... Click on tutorials, and you watch the top tutorial and explain how you can use Freedoms Phoenix to do this. We are, I wanted to announce this here and do this, and thanks to George Donnelly for making this available. Oh, and I loaded up a, a graphic. I thought it was for this hour show. I think I changed the graphic on Channel 2. Sorry, man. You know, do it. Anyway, that, that's a QR code that goes to uh, promote our e-zine. It's one of the cards that we're going to be doing because we have a monthly magazine, a digital magazine for tablets and so on, which is a whole other future thing. You know, I, damn, you know, here we go. We're doing a new application, RSS feed for your smartphone that one of these go to. Blip! You got Freemans Phoenix on your smartphone that, you know, loads down for smartphones. So this is the kind of stuff that we're doing for whatever we want to do, but you can do it for whatever you want to do. And in your community, it can be localized. Don't try and make it global whatever. That's what we're doing. We're bringing it back. We're bringing it back. It's going to be local stuff. It's going to be whatever you want to promote. Whoever wants to do whatever they want to do. We'll get them on big 28 by 60 sheets, have a whole bunch of different logos, and we'll strip them out and cut them, this, and every activist goes, got a kid or whatever. You know, little bitty ones, the medium ones, the big ones, depending on where you're going to put it. And we're going to put them everywhere. Everywhere. Think about what this means. Bringing it home. You have a small town of 3,000, and everybody in that town, certainly one with a smartphone, which means Generation Next, they're going to be going to whatever it is that you had up there once. I suggest you be responsible and creative and, and uh, you know, educate people and not be stupid. But, you know, it's not my town. Do what you want. But we're going to demonstrate this. Right now we had a uh, an old beat up, ready to throw it away junkyard RV that somebody gave us, but it runs. We worked on it a little bit, got past the missions and everything, and it's a body's in good shape. So the activists are out there this last week, and Donna's taking charge of that, my wife, and she's you now they're getting it all sanded and prepped, and we're going to paint it and logo it, and it's going to look like that sign. And we're going to be taking it all over the valley and focusing a lot of our time in Tempe. And we're going to be promoting these QR codes. You know, every little bit, we already did this. Once You look up wallet voting. Go to walletvoting.com and you look at the videos we did of uh, us putting stuff on cars at parking meters. Now, we put nickels in all the parking meters and then put the flyers on their windshield and said, we fed your meter so you won't have to feed the state. Oh, we're going to have some fun. You see how much fun you can have with this? So we're going to supply all the templates and make sure you uh, get the concept that we can decentralize, that we can horizontalize, that we can democratize for 
you know, one of the words you can use, and make this a, a back to the people thing to where there's no concentration of effort. There's no one head of a snake that you have to lop off and the whole movement died. That's what I fear more than anything else. It's not that Dr. Paul isn't doing something right. It's that he's doing it very well. You know, in politics, you know, it, we help give him foundation and launching pad and whatever, and he's kicking butt with it. Kick butt, keep kicking butt, Dr. Paul. Amen, brother. But I'm telling you, if we consolidate all our efforts around one thing, it makes it easy to stop everything. So because I know better, okay, they're later they're going to go, ooh, why was there any so clairvoyant? Because this is how it always works. They love bringing things in. They love having the Tea Party inwards do something that they can control. So I'm going, all right, what we're going to go ahead and do is have a horizontal, across-the-planet, localized effort, a mechanism by which you can promote how your local city council is violating your rights, how the local police are being abusive, how you have, uh, oh, and like Stephen Molyneux stuff, where are we going to put those QR codes? Government buildings or something? Heck no. The landing page for him is going to go for people that are in the high schools. Then when we talk to Stephen, I'm like, hey, man, Whatever you want to put up there, keep in mind, you know, if it's on everybody's locker, we put them on uh, the high school parking lot and all the windshields. If we put them on uh, the football stadiums and Friday night football, if they're on freaking all the football players' helmets, if we do, I mean, you know, whatever we do to infiltrate the high schools, one city, I mean, how many high schools are there? You know, less than a dozen probably. So I'm going, you know, because, you know, we have a lot of high schools. But what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and demonstrate this. It starts the end of the first week in October. You think, you know, uh, the city and law enforcement and the local politicians and these guys don't know we're coming? Heck, I got almost all the legislators subscribed to the daily, twice a day newsletter, email dispatch of Freedoms Phoenix. They know. And they know that I know, they know that I know, they know I know. You know, so I'm like, here we come. What are they going to do? <coughs> I don't know. I, I don't really care, because any time they do anything to try and suppress us, we just get more attention anyway. So <clears throat> what other things might you promote? What other may, ways might you do it? What might you put these things on? That's what I need to hear about. That's why I want, I, we're going to supply you with the information, the ability to do this, and then we're just going to see it explode, because I know it is. Why? Because it has the same attributes that the Levolution did, no one in any position with a shiny badge that has the perceived authority to say you can't. You can. The answer is I go around the country. I'm going, you know, the first, you know what? I think a good yes. You know, we should yes. The answer is always yes. But you have to do it. So what we're going to do is supply you with a lot of the material and the ideas and the concepts for you to do it. Bus stations, train stations, airports. Newspaper racks, you know, but we're doing removable vinyl. That's one of the things that was the benefit of the Levolution and all the banners and everything that we did. I, you know, it's amazing. Millions of pieces. Now, I don't remember any reports reports of damage or graffiti or, or property damage or vandalism. You know, it's a public property, and I got you know whatever or public area, and it's a peel off vinyl. They don't like it. You know, I'll cope. So I'm just, you know, I leave it up to you to be able to make sure that you're not violating someone else's property and you make that decision how you want to do that. But I'm telling you, you know, I'm we're in a revolution, a revolution, but we need to keep it peaceful and we want to help and we want to keep it diversified so it's more effective and it cannot be, it cannot be killed. Cannot. And I'm afraid that's being consolidated too much. And that's the reason why I want to do this, is to demonstrate that we can have an effect locally that will have a global impact because we're going to be exposing people to the concept of agorism, volunteerism, anarchy, leave me aloneism, whatever you want to call it. It's just, you know, there are those that just want to be left alone and there are those that just won't leave them alone. Which one are you? Stay tuned to Freedom's Phoenix, and we'll have all the goodies up there for you.